Hey folks, John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru here. So this video you're about to see on YouTube is a free preview of my course on Timeleaf and the Spring Framework, how they work together. If you like what you see in this series, head over to my website at springframework.guru and you can learn more about the full course. Hey folks, John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru. So in this module, we are gonna take the HTML documents that we've been working with and convert them over to Timeleaf templates. Now, it should be a, a fairly simple thing. We are gonna encounter a couple issues. And what's happening is we coded these as actual HTML documents, but browsers are rather forgiving. And when we run this through Timeleaf, Timeleaf is expecting it to be a well-structured XML document. And if we don't follow all the XML rules, time leaf is going to blow up on us which is something that we we don't want to happen so i said a couple small tweaks that we need to make to the the templates and i'm going to step you through through them i'm going to show show you that what we should have to do if we had a well-structured document and then we need to clean up a couple minor things to make uh, time leaf happy again and it, it's more to do with having a well-structured xml document for the browser to render and just just remember browsers work on html not XML. XML is a, a strictly structured document, but Timeleaf is going to be utilizing XML. So if XML is not well structured and well formed, Timeleaf is going to blow up on us. So we need to fix a couple things there. I'm going to work through those errors and I'll show you what I mean by a, a well structured document as we get into it. So let's jump over to IntelliJ now and we'll start converting over these HTML documents to Timeleaf templates. Okay, jumped over into IntelliJ, and here's our, our document that we've been working with. And I'm going to cheat a little bit. I actually have uh, the XML namespace copied over my clipboard. So what we need to do to make this a, an official Timeleaf template is come in here and paste in this XML name, namespace. So what this is telling us now is that we want to utilize the Timeleaf XML namespace. And, and this will allow us to use Timeleaf tags within the document that the Timeleaf engine is going to work with. Now, this doesn't affect how it renders in the browser at all. It's more for how the doc document is validated as an XML document. So let's go ahead and run this now. And to run Spring Boot from IntelliJ, we can click up here on the right arrow, or on the green arrow, and say run. And this will start it up in Spring Boot. We can see Spring Boot initializing down at the bottom of the screen. Spring Boot is now up and running. Tomcat is running on port 8080. I'm going to toggle over to Chrome. Refresh this page. And now we get an error message. Let's take a look back over. And I'm going to span this out a little bit. Okay, now we're getting a SAX parse exception saying that it, there's no matching end tag for meta. So that's right in the header there. So we can just close this out like so. And I'm gonna clear this log. And what we can do is this is running in, in Tomcat. And if we rebuild the project, that's going to regenerate the time leaf templates that Tomcat is looking at. So I'm doing a, a quick rebuild and I'm gonna come over here and say refresh. Now we're getting the, the same thing, but it's at a, a different position. Let's take a look to see what we have now. Okay, now this time it's the image tag, so the image tags weren't closed. Now, the browser didn't care about it because it's a little more flexible, but with the XML standard, we do need to close out our image tag. So let's go take care of that now. I'm just doing a search on IMG. So there's one, we can just close him. See how the tag was open there. Okay, fast forward a little bit while I was closing out the image tags. There's a, a few of them. I, I didn't want you to have to watch through all that. So let's go over and take a look and see what's happening now. I'm going to go and rebuild the project. And again, rebuilding it allows Tomcat to see the, the fresh time leaf template. And let's go over and take a look at this now in Chrome. Okay, and there's our page. Now let's go over and take a look at product and take a look at that. See how that looks. Okay, now I'm getting a not found error. And that's a, a different error than what we are seeing before. Before it was a 500 error saying that there's a server problem. So let's take a look at that. And this is still the old error. So there's no error message in the, the console. And I, actually I saw what the problem was. 
I forgot to map this. So this is a mistake that I made from the last time. I got to restart Spring Boot for this. So I'm going to bounce that. Click on that little arrow down there. Cause the Spring Boot to restart. And I'm probably going to see similar problems with this template itself too. So Spring Boot is up and running again. Let's refresh this. Okay, now we're seeing the similar errors. Let's take a look over here in IntelliJ at the console of Spring Boot. Scrolling up. Okay, same thing with meta tag. So let's take a look at this. And we need to close out this. And let's do a search on images. So we got the same problem here. Let's see if we can fix both of them. And that should do it. So I'm going to do a, a rebuild. So we can see down at the bottom of the screen, IntelliJ is remaking the project for us. Reparse the, the timely templates and deployed those. And let's refresh this now. Okay, now there's our other template. Okay, in this in this module, I showed you how easy it was to take the HTML document and convert it over to a time leaf template. The, the biggest thing is that we had to add, the, add in that XML namespace, and then we need to have a, a well-structured XML document. And because if we don't, Timeleaf doesn't parse it correctly. And Timeleaf is going to use XML extensions. It's going to use that XML namespace that we added to expand out and give us Timeleaf tags that we can use within the document. And what's going to happen as we render this, the browsers are going to ignore the Timeleaf specific tags, but we've put them in as XML, which makes it a valid document, which Java can read and use it for its parsing. So that's kind of an important step. And we saw the errors that we ran into is because we were working with an HTML document and browsers have a little looser standard on what they'll accept and what they won't accept for HTML slash XML. So we needed to go to a stronger standard to support that XML namespace or time leap. It was just a couple minor changes. We didn't close a couple tags, which was causing the XML parser to complain. Once we closed those tags, everything was happy. Now we have a well-structured XML document and we're ready to start using time leaf specific tags within the document to start changing the rendering behavior of how that is presented to the browser through the time leaf templating engine in Spring MVC.